This is going to be a quick video of how to set up SeedStar XP using a 2600 or 2630 display. That 1800 or command center will also be the same setup process in our planner application. To access this, we'll begin with uh, hit our menu. If you don't have it currently set up for your home page to, to view this, you can access it by going to menu, planner, and from there we're going to go to the second tab down on the right, which is our G tab. This is for our total planner setup. Uh, we go through here to each one of these tabs and, and, and fill in the correct information for this planner. We'll start with our frame tab. We'll type in how many rows, row spacing, planner width automatically be calculated, and whether we have a split row configuration or not. Clutch disconnect warning could also be checked if uh, we wanted it to alert us when our clutches uh, have been manually turned off, and that'll allow us to know that that section is not planning. We could also put it in transport mode from here as well. We'll go into our sensor configuration. We'll look at uh, C first. Uh, we want to ensure that all rows are on. If we want to manually go into a row and turn it off for whatever reason, it'll tell us how many rows or which rows are off here. Uh, just That would be in case you had a faulty sensor and you wanted to bypass it until we could get it fixed. Uh, you could just turn it off there, but for the most part, you want them all on at all times. Uh, vacuum. Uh, most of your planner is going to have a two sensor, two vacuum configuration. Uh, you could uh, uh, do the calibration bay for each one of these sensors as well if there, for some reason it deemed that a calibration needs to be done. It's going to show our actual vacuum down here in the lower left. So if we had uh, a planner shut down completely and the vacuum motors are not running and for some reason we're holding values in here, uh, we can zero that out by hitting the zero just to the right of that. We'll go, you could do fertilizer if you had a fertilizer rig uh, on your planter. Uh, height, we have a common and a separate. Uh, for most of the planters, you're just going to have a uh, on-off depression switch on our, one of the row units, probably right behind the left tire, uh, the unit right behind the left tire of the tractor is where it's usually found. Uh, but So there's really no need to do a calibration here, but for some reason if you had a planter that had a potentiometer, type uh, uh, sensor just like a header would you could go through the steps of calibration uh, fully raise the planter hit accept hit the down arrow fully lower planter hit the accept button that gives your numerical range uh, of how far the planter can be raised and lowered and then you could set that height by manually typing it in or uh, setting your planter height uh, and then hitting our accept button down here uh, go to our tractor speed. This is probably one of the most important uh, uh, functions, of, especially on a variable drive planter, because uh, variable drive planters are looking at our uh, looking for ground speed. Uh, so if we had a manual speed of five miles an hour, if we had an auto unchecked and manual five miles per hour typed in here, and we went out there and started planning, uh, no, doesn't matter how fast or how slow we're or driving it's going to think that we're planting five miles an hour so if we're planting six miles an hour we're going to be roughly a fifth off on our population uh, so whatever you type in here uh, for some reason if you lost GPS that would probably be one of the few times you would use manual speed uh, but uh, whatever you type in here for miles per hour that's what you need to be driving uh, ground driven is not that critical because uh, you set your transmission manually and it's going to plant that rate but uh, it will affect how you uh, monitor seeds per acre on your display because it's calculating on ground speed as well. But always have uh, auto checked in most cases, especially uh, if you have GPS. If you don't see GPS in the lower left corner and you do over here on the tractor on the right side, then uh, there's probably some uh, uh, addresses and a couple wires need to be changed on your tractor and you can contact your uh, local service department, John Deere dealer, to to make those changes for you. Uh, typically you're going to see that on 30 series and R series tractors. Uh, we'll go to downforce. Uh, you have three sensor configuration. Here it shows you which rows uh, uh, that the, each sensor is on and you can enable or disable it depending on if you had a faulty sensor you could disable it until you could get a new one fixed just to bypass an alarm. You also do calibration values here as well. Uh, ride quality, they're going to be located on the same rows as your downforce sensor. You can enable or disable those as well. If you had it uh, disabled, where you see the zero, there would be dash marks. Uh, then we look at our PDF air pressure, which is pneumatic downforce pressure. We can do insert step value. So where we hit our up and down arrows on our home screen, that's how it adjusts in 20-pound increments. Uh, we can set that to whatever we'd like as well. 
And we also set a low alarm, so if it gets below 40 pounds of pressure, uh, it'll send us alarm. You also run through a calibration procedure if it is uh, necessary. And the lower left is going to show what our actual uh, downforce, pneumatic downforce pressure is at this time. And if the system was completely bled and there was no pressure on the lines and the bags at all uh, in the compressor, you could, uh, and it's still showing a value here, you could recalibrate that sensor by hitting uh, our accept button in the lower right corner and hitting zero. So that's all there is for sensor configuration. We go on to our drives now. So if we're using a barrel brake drive planner, it'll it'll tell us, uh, it shows everything right here. For some reason you needed to make any changes, uh, say it was actually a ground driven. You could change that right there uh, and then what unit you're using and whether to enable quick start. And quick start is uh, going to be uh, uh, the function that allows you to turn your seed meters to prime them up uh, instead of backing up and double planting like you would with a ground driven unit. If you have verbrite drive motors, you can hit the quick start enabled and it's going to spin your verbrite drive motors to prime your seed plates. Um, so you can also set up drive uh, sections here as well. And you can go through and it's showing motor one. As, so this is looking at it as a verbrite drive planner. Uh, motor one it starts on row controls one through eight. And then the, these are the drive and driven gears that each one's set on. You can also change that information from here as well. And go through each step. Uh, if you didn't have row command, you could uncheck the box and go through each step to fill in the correct information. Uh, if you did have row command on there, you could... Uh, go through the, all these steps and then it's going to take you through the configuration of which rows row command is set up on and you hit accept on that as well and ask to cycle power now when it does it say cycle power that does not mean just unplug your display that means actually key key off the tractor allow the tractor to power down the planter display everything give it a minute or two then power back on and uh, all your settings will be saved at that point uh, the row sections is just a shortcut to get to row command setup if uh, if it is uh, installed on your planner. And then you have an option for display if you had a command center and you wanted to push uh, everything over to your uh, 2630 display you had inside your tractor, you can go here and push that uh, uh, planner information from one display to the other. And that's all there is for the setup of Seedstar XP. Uh, on a 2600 2630 display and it'll be exactly the same setup procedure for 1800s and command centers as well.